Hello and welcome back to Divinity Original Sin 2, the 2020 Definitive Edition Guide. When we left off, we were in a conversation with Niles the Flenser over here, uh, but we had not yet started combat with him. So, quick note, if you have Fane in your party, um, you are trying to get the Face Ripper from Niles so that you can, you know, mask the fact that you're undead. Uh, if you don't have fan in your party, there's really no plot that goes along with this guy, other than he's just a very creepy magister doing all kinds of weird experiments back here. He's he's created some meat golem Frankenstein's monster type of things. Uh, he's he's just a creepy, not very nice dude. All right. Um, so if you have a little conversation with him, you'll you'll notice real quick he's he's extra cringy. Uh, so I'm just gonna one through that slowly till we get to the end option, and at that point we're going to uh, who are we gonna buff up here? Pyramus or Mumbo? Let's go with Mumbo. Uh, he does a little bit more prow control type stuff, and uh, here we go. Now, uh, prior to finishing the last episode. We made Beast sneak, and uh, he is just over enough so that uh, Niles doesn't see him here, which is good for us. So we're going to have Beast sneak around while the rest of them are in combat. Um, we stole from Niles before. We can't steal from him once we're in combat. It'll just give you the uh, you know stabby icon there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up right behind Niles, make sure we're in that backstab zone. Uh, we're going to make sure that we got both daggers equipped here. Make sure we've got both level 4. Perfect. Um, and then the biggest damage dealing single attack that we can do with Beast right now is Flurry. It's going to do 21 to 24, where our normal attack is only 15 to 18. Uh, and it would normally cost an extra action point in combat, but doing it this way, no action points needed. Alright, so that did 33 damage to him after the crit. Alright, now we got Niles is gonna be go. We got Red Prince, one of the Meat Golems, Mumbo, and then Niles. So Niles has 65 action points here. Uh, we're gonna have Red Prince soak up some blood, get that extra 6 to 8 physical damage per shot. Uh, we're gonna have him do Sky Shot, jump, get that uh, high ground bonus. Alright, that drops Niles to 20 physical damage. Can we knock him down with 20 armor remaining? We absolutely can. Alright, we're going to do 22 to 24 with that. We did 22 and he is out of commission for a turn. Now, all of these meat golems, they're going to spend their turn getting enraged. That makes them automatically crit. And then they're going to try and claw their way out of these cages. Alright, it's a uh, rage cage, if you will. And over here we got this silent monk is going to be going pretty soon. We got that one and then this one. Uh, and the one over here is going to have to move quite a bit. So if we go for this one first, we can impale that one. And that's going to prevent them from moving because they are now crippled. And uh, they're also slowed. Not that that really makes a big difference once they're already crippled. But, you know, we got them both anyway. Uh, I'm going to make it rain on Mumbo here. Give him elemental affinity. Alright, and um, we are actually going to... Well, I would end his turn there, but he's got two action points, and with Hasten, he's going to recover five next turn. So I don't want one of those to go to waste, so we're going to hit that Encourage buff right there. Now we can end our turn and not worry about wasting any action points. Alright, so again, we're not really worried about this uh, Silent Monk, and this one, uh, she is in range to be attacking us here, so we're going we're gonna to do a little bit about that. Uh, she is wet, so if we attack with fire, we're gonna deal. Right, we're gonna deal 90%. That's not too bad. Um, but because she's wet, let's see. We got 46. Doesn't look like we're gonna be able to stun her in one hit there. So I'm just gonna hit her with the wand attack. Just whittle down her armor a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna be too worried about her actually doing any damage on her turn, whether she's locked down or not. Uh, some of these uh, silent monks do have. A move called Silencing Stare, which is a upper level necromancy spell that we can't actually get at this level. A little unfair that they get it. Uh, and it can make us not able to use any magic, so we want to make sure we don't get hit by that. Um, and Mumbo has enough magic armor where that didn't freeze him or chill him, so we are fine. 
Uh, now we're right here behind uh, Niles again, so we're gonna use Flurry again. Flurry is a move that comes back up every turn if you have two weapons equipped. So don't worry about uh, that having to recharge or timing it right. You got three action points, you can use it. And then we're gonna unequip a dagger and knock him down again. Um, and we're kind of on a roll. Uh, Niles is kind of dangerous, so we're gonna take him out first. But at this point, I think it's going to be more efficient to drop him over here so we can start, uh, you know, that meat golem will be there, she's over here, he's over here now, and now Pyramus can teleport her up here. We're going to be dealing a lot of area effect damage there in just a minute. Now, Red Prince's haste is going to wear off next turn, uh, so I'm going to use Tactical Retreat, move him over here, that'll reapply haste him so he gets it next turn. Uh, and these meat golems, once they break their cage, they usually don't run out of it. So we don't have to worry about this one moving from that spot. Alright, Beast, uh, we're going to delay his turn. He's going to end up using Cloak and Dagger to move somewhere over here, but we're not quite sure where yet. Uh, same thing with Mumbo. I think we're going to delay his turn just a little bit. Alright, and now uh, Pyramus just barely can't teleport this monk. That's a little upsetting. All right, well, we've got these guys all in one area. Um, what to do, what to do. Um, let's see, if we move right there, can we teleport this one? No, that's even it's even worse. All right, uh, so we are going to, oh, we really got to hustle to get that teleport range. Why? Is that that big of a uh, sight obscure there? I guess so, all right, well, we're just gonna put some fire here so that that uh, monk wastes some action points running around. Like, I had to waste some action points running around this turn. Alright, uh, that one's gonna come out of his cage and he's doing just fine. Uh, yeah, so she's gonna waste more action points running around the fire rather than running through it. And that's about where I was gonna. Eh, it's close to where I would have teleported her. It's not too bad. Uh, I don't like that this one's moving that much. Um. That's all right. Now, I was hoping we could get them a little bit more grouped up than what they are right now, so that's a bit of a bummer. Um, so right now, we're gonna entangle this one, just keep him out of the fight for a couple of turns there. Um, that one's pretty low on magic armor, so we're gonna hit her. Remember, uh, Winter Blast doesn't hurt your allies, so we don't gotta worry about those two getting hit there, and she's chilled. So one of these ice shards will now freeze her, and then we're going to send two ice shards over here that'll freeze that meat golem and deal some good damage to the armor over there. Well, that should have frozen her. I'm not quite sure why it didn't. Hmm. That's odd. All right, a little bit too far for backlash. There we go. We're going to hit that one. And then we're going to petrify this monk right there. Um, that'll be it for that turn. We're going to end his turn there. Uh, now, this meat golem is, again, going to have to spend most of its turn just getting into range, so we don't got to worry about him too much. Uh, Niles is, uh, well, he's about half health, so let's see if we can... Ooh, almost taken him down. All right, um, and I don't think Ricochet is going to be close enough to uh, bounce off of him and anybody. So just a normal shot there will do it. And we level up. Now, had we taken some damage, that level up would be very nice to heal us up to full health. Oh, that is a fast golem. He covered some ground. All right, now uh, we got five action points. If we try to run around the back of this meat golem, right... Uh, to get into backstab range. We're going to have to run around on this ice. That's going to give us a chance to slip and fall. And also, if you see that little red circle under the meat golem, uh, it's not there now. Now it's there. It's got that little sword pointing on the ground there. Um, that's showing us that he has opportunist, meaning he can make opportunity attacks. So if you run past him, he's going to hit you. So I'm not going to run past him. I'm going to just attack this agitated silent monk right here. And then I don't want this meat golem attacking Beast because Beast has already uh, got his armor down. So, gonna go invisible. Uh, now, I could level up right now, mid combat, and feel free to do that if you want. Uh, if I bump up my intelligence right now with Mumbo, he will deal more damage in this combat. 
Uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to wait because maybe you guys aren't following exactly what I'm doing. So maybe you are going to do this entire fight at level 4. So I'm not going to level up just, uh, just to make it more along the lines of what the average player is going to see. Uh, now, I don't want to hit Pyramus here, but he's got full magic armor. So if I hit him a little bit, it's not a big deal. Alright, now that one is frozen, which is what we were looking for. I don't think we have an angle to hit this one here. No. How about this guy? Too far. And uh, here we go. This guy is entangled. He's not going anywhere. Perfect. All right. Now, now we can start uh, our teleport shenanigans a little bit. Not that we're doing teleport shenanigans, but we gotta try to get these guys all in one spot here to really do what I want to do. Alright, and then we're going to actually hasten ourselves and peace of mind ourselves. Uh, hastening yourself really only pays off if you can get at least two turns out of it. Alright, now she's an ice shard. She chilled a couple of us, didn't freeze us. Silencing stare. Alright, so that silenced Mumbo, Beast, and Red Prince. For Red Prince and Beast, it's not a big deal. For Mumbo, that's going to hurt us quite a bit. With Mumbo... That means that we cannot use any magic on his turn, so he's going to just be able to use his wand. Beast, though, Red Prince, we can still just stab people and shoot people. Alright, so now with Pyramus, we got three of these guys over here. Uh, and they got ice underneath all of them, so we're going to hit that fireball, melt the ice. Alright, so there is some water there, it's not all fire. And then we're going to hit him with his Dazing Bolt. Alright, and if you look over here, uh, it said shocked above their heads, but those two are stunned. And then this one, this one is just shocked. Alright, um, so he's not going to get a turn. Uh, that one will, and that one, that one will as well. And we got Mumbo and Red Prince going in between. Now even though we can't use magic, um, we can still use our special bow, or our special arrows here. So we're going to knock, oh, we missed. That's what I was talking about earlier. These things do have a very good chance to dodge. There we go. And it's very, very upset. We did get an arrow recovered there, but that first one was completely wasted, which is never really anything you want to see. All right, so this guy is no longer immobilized, so he will be moving our, his next turn. She slipped on that ice. Perfect. All right, now since this guy over here can move, we're going to have Beast hop on over. Get that instant crit right there, and then we're gonna sucker punch that meat golem and take him out of the fight. We don't want him doing a whole lot. We're gonna have Beast move back over here. He's gonna be back on this side, uh, and Mumbo will take care of that guy on his next turn. Alright, uh, once again now, uh, we gotta try and crowd control these guys. So he's up next, he's out, and then we got this meat golem here. So. Let's see if we can stun him at least. There we go. Now he's stunned, but he's on an electrified surface, so as soon as he moves on that electrified surface, he's going to get stunned. All right. Um, and then this one here, we actually can't hit that one from where we are because this post is in the way. Uh, let's fire breath over here, hit this silent mob. Now they only have 10 HP. And the burning is going to deal 9 to 10 damage. Um, so, 9 to 10 damage. They got negative 15% fires. That one should die on its next turn. And we know that these things blow up when they die. So I could try to just get out of its way. Or I could use shields up, which restores armor equal to the value my shield gives. That way I can just kind of tank the hit. Alright, and then over here, uh, let's see, he's up next and he's going to get stunned when he steps on that water. Uh, and we got this monk right there who isn't going to get a turn, and then that monk that's going to die. So, uh, that's the only one that we really got to worry about. So, let's hit that one there. Alright. There we go, that one's stunned, just like we planned. Alright. And now Mumbo's got his turn back, and uh, he can use magic again, no longer silenced. 
So that one's immobilized. So he's out of the fight again for another turn. And then we're just going to hit these three, deal some area effect damage. And at this point, we're not really worried about the surfaces interacting in a suboptimal way. Because they're all pretty close to death. So uh, it's not really a big issue if uh, we unfreeze them or anything. Alright, he's going to use Enraged again, but it's kind of useless. Can't really move. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, smack this one around here. Alright, and Ricochet might hit them both. Yep. Alright. And just like that, we are down to just one enemy. And uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of trouble on that fight. Um, like, at all, really. It was kind of nice. There you go, and I think that's too far for, yeah. So if you're on the ground, Sky Shot will increase your range as well by a little bit. Give you a little bit of that, uh, like, jumping vision type of thing. Uh, and I don't think that's going to kill. No. Alright, and then the way that cage is set up, I don't know if this even hits, but we'll try it. Alright, it does hit through the cage. Cool. Alright, now, if you are in a rush to get out of Fort Joy, which I would understand why, but there's no reason to be, uh, you can exit right through that little uh, pipe right there. Uh, it'll get you through the swamp that's outside the fort. But if you do that, when you come back into the fort, all the magisters in the fort will instantly start attacking you, and you'll lose out on an encounter that we haven't done yet. Um, oh, when you loot Niles, you get his daggers. They're decent. Uh, so anyway, if you really just want to get on with the story, you can go through there. Um, but there's no reason to be, because if you're not leveled up adequately, you're going to get, uh, you're gonna get uh, beat down pretty hard out there. Alright, and then you can loot the rest of this room. Um, we're going to level up here and then end this episode, because that was a rather lengthy fight. Alright, so Mumbo doesn't need any more constitution to hold his shield. It's going to be a few more levels till he needs to get that up. Um, memory? Let's see. Uh, he did get an extra one right there because... Did, is he wearing? Yeah, he's wearing Withermore's gir girdle, so he got an extra memory slot there. Now with that, um, there's actually a few things that I want him to learn. So this is going to be one of those rare times where I'm not going to put any points into his intelligence. I'm going to put both of them into memory. Um, you're mostly going to have that happen with your mages because they have two primary um, ability trees. All right, You can make a mage with just one ability tree. You can make him just Hydro or just Geo or just Pyro, whatever you want. Um, but... We are going to be uh, combining some skill books and doing some interesting stuff with him. So we are going to give him one point in Necromancer here. Um, and that's just for some niche little things that I like doing with him. All right. Um, so now we got three extra memory slots with him. So we're going to actually go through here. Uh, we're going to just pick magic. So magic up here will sort through and you'll get all your skill books are on one tab here. So the necromancy skills that I want him to learn, uh, I want him to learn raise bloated corpse because well it's fun, um, and I also want him to learn elemental totem, which he can learn because he got summoning from the character creation screen. I got room for one more. Uh, let's see, what do I want him to learn? He can't learn infect because he only has one point in necromancy. Uh, but right now, Mumbo can't really do any physical damage. If we need him to do physical damage. He is at a loss. Necromancy skills, uh, for the most part, deal physical damage. All right, there's like one or two exceptions to that, but for the most part, they all deal physical damage. Uh, so to make sure that uh, he can do physical damage when he needs to, we're going to give him Mosquito Swarm right there. All right, so Mosquito Swarm comes up in three turns, not a very long cooldown. Um, it is going to deal less damage than our Hydro or Geo attacks, because it's physical damage, so it scales with Warfare that we don't have. Uh, but that's alright. Alright, all right. Pyram is here now. We're going to have him... Let's see, does he need to learn any new spells here? Uh, he could learn Spontaneous Combustion. That wouldn't be terrible. Um, but honestly, uh, you know what? I'm going to give him one point in Memory, and then one point in Intelligence. Alright. So we're actually going to have him learn Searing Daggers. 
All right, and I like Searing Daggers because, uh, similar to Ice Fan, uh, you get to shoot three of them out. You get to pick where they each go independently. Um, so that means when we have our, uh, you know, big patches of ice or blood or water or whatever it happens to be, uh, with Searing Daggers, you can pinpoint much smaller areas and be more precise with what you're doing. So I can make ice melt underneath just one enemy and then shock him and not worry about that shock going back to me. Alright, so it's, it's, it's nice to be able to pinpoint those. Or maybe you want to get one guy on fire but not melt the guy next to him. Stuff like that. Um, and over here, let's see, our base level of Aerothurge is 2, base Pyro is 3, uh, so we should probably up Arrow. Is there anything else I want to get, though, at the moment? Let's look. So with Pyrokinetics, we can combine it with Huntsman to get a little trap, uh, which is nice because it's one action point. We don't have a lot of one action point attacks right now. Uh, we, you know what? Yeah, we're going to get one point in Necromancy with him as well. Um, I'm going to drop that just so I can show you this skill. So with Necromancy, we're actually not going to learn any of the Necromancy skills we have right now. We're actually going to make a new one. Uh, so we're going to take Bloodsucker because I don't plan on actually using that one. So we're going to combine skill books. So if we combine any Necromancy skill book... With any pyrokinetic skill book, we're going to get a brand new hybrid pyro necro skill book. I'm going to use peace of mind because I already have two people with it. I don't think I'm going to need a third person to use it, so there's no use keeping that one around. So any necro, any pyro, um, as long as neither of them use source, which right now none of ours do. We're not high enough level in the game yet for that. Uh, but as long as we have one pyro, one necro, we're going to combine those, and that will always give you a corpse explosion skill book. All right? So similar to the Blood Rain, or Raining Blood that we have found earlier, this is a hybrid skill between Pyrokinetic and Necromancer. You're going to need one point minimum in each, Necro and Pyro, to use it. And Corpse Explosion, uh, well, it does exactly what it sounds like it does. Uh, if there's a corpse somewhere, all right, we're just going to pick this Edge Shade Sound Monk. Right, it has to target the corpse. Can't let me move the targeting area until I get to another corpse. Uh, it blows it up. And it does pretty good physical damage in the area. And now that is uh, Pyramus' second way of dealing physical damage. The first is teleport. And you can use teleport to move the corpse where you want it to go. Alright, uh, Beast level up. Uh, we're actually going to have him also get to... Uh, we'll have him get one finesse, one point in memory. Um, and then another point in warfare to buff up his damage. So with the extra memory, the ability that he's going to learn... I'm actually debating. There's a few. Uh, chloroform and Adrenaline are the top two contenders here. Uh, chloroform is one action point. Does pure magic damage. Uh, doesn't do fire or electric or water or whatever. It's just pure magic. Can't be resisted. Um, and if it hits them, and after it hits them, if, it has, uh, if they have no more magic armor, puts them to sleep for a turn. Uh, so sleep is nice. They can't attack. Uh, the only downside is you can't attack them either, or it'll wake them up. So it's really good for crowd controlling another single target, which Beast is really good at between Chicken Claw and Petrifying Touch and Sucker Punch. So it fits his whole uh, playstyle pretty nicely. And then Adrenaline gives you two extra action points right now. It doesn't cost any, but then next turn, either you don't get two of them. So it's like you get a, an advance payment on your action points. Uh, I'm going to have him learn Chloroform. Um, I, I like chloroform. It's nice, especially on a mixed damage party like this. Alright, and then Red Prince. Uh, there's actually no new skills for him to learn. I could have him learn uh, first aid if I wanted, but I don't want. So we're going to go with warfare, pump up his damage, and finesse, pump up his damage. Alright, that's it for this episode. I will see you next time.